I hereby proclaim the guided tour begins. So our little plan is this. We are going to walk along the Blue Trail. A nice and brisk walk that will take us through the central part of the reserve. I will be your personal guide, and during the walk I will tell you about worthwhile sites and activities we have here. The path is marked by signs, and there is a trail you can follow. But I will also mark the path on your hunter mate if you get lost. Don't worry, be happy, my friend. You know, I recorded a little tune for this occasion. I put in a mouth harp and drum. Uh, ah, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Oiva Reijo Ikävalko, and I'm the warden here at Revontuli Coast. I've been the warden for about 20 years. Which is pretty long, considering I'm only about 40 years old. <laughs> Even earlier than that, I was the assistant warden. It's because I like it very much here. It's my hobby and my therapy. I can think better when I'm walking in nature. You know, people watch TV show marathons. I walk marathons in the woods and along the coast. It's the same thing for me. But I also watch TV marathons. I live with my avopuoliso. Um, I'm not sure what the English word is for that. Uh, partner, maybe. Her name is Pirjo, and we have three kids together. Lucas, Matti and Helena. You know, in time of test, family is best. We also have a little dog, a Rottweiler. Hmm, what more would be interesting for you to know about me? Oh yes, I love music and instruments, of course. Strangely, I don't really listen to music that much, but I collect instruments and play them. But I think my music is pretty good. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, pretty good is probably right. Isn't it interesting that almost every situation, mood or feeling can be framed by a song or melody? I'm very jealous of great musicians. They have such honest expression at their fingertips. If math is the language of the universe, then music has to be the language of people and emotion. And sometimes I talk a lot. The tune I wrote, uh, let me play it for you. What do you think?
Ah, here we have our first practical stop of the tour. You should scout the area with the lookout tower. You might find something you want to check out later. During the trek, if you see anything that interests you, animal tracks or something else, feel free to pursue that and come back to the trail when you want. It's your vacation. You're the boss. Ah yes, here we have Revontuli coast. Beautiful trees, lakes and ideas in every direction. It is a small country with a very big heart. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Now that we are further from the camping grounds, the lakes to the south are great to hunt waterfowl. Lucas, my oldest son, likes waterfowl hunting very much. So we wake up early when the weather is still calm and go out. We have a few favorite lakes we visit. Knowing the birds is very important to have a good catch. They all group and fly differently, so I recommend you take your time to identify them before the shooting starts. I don't hunt as much as I used to, but I'm very close friends with the local hunters. I used to hunt a lot when I was younger, but with time I've come to enjoy the reserve management side of things, making sure the needs of all the animals and plants are met. When a hunter tells me they've harvested a high-scoring animal, I know it's thanks to Mama Nature and a little thanks to Papa Oiva. <laughs> Uh, but you know, mostly I... Are you starting to get itchy? The Nordic region has more mosquitoes than you might be used to. That's why the Vikings tried to leave all the time. The many bodies of water are a breeding ground for mosquitoes. You know, most people love to hear birds sing. I wonder if there's anybody out there who loves the buzz of mosquitoes. Like a mosquito buzz, maybe I should record some mosquito sounds. Hmm. Release something on the internet. Yeah, it's hard to like them, but they have their role in the ecosystem, even if it's not very obvious to us humans. I left some mosquito repellent you can use at a camp near here.
There you go. No more new itching. Only old itching. Every year we have our own spin on the big five challenge, but we call ours Sekalaiset 19. Sounds exciting, right? <laughs> well, that's because you don't speak Finnish. It translates to Miscellaneous 19. A nice name for a hunting challenge, you know? Feel free to join in at your own tempo. The competition is basically to snag a gold or better of every animal in the reserve. And if you get tired of shooting, and would rather just walk around and appreciate nature through the lens of an observer, we also have a local photo competition. Feel free to take part. I've also marked out the highest point in the reserve. I'm up there at least once a month. It's the perfect getaway when I want to have a mandate with myself. I'll pack my favorite cheeses, some savory pastries and maybe a beverage and head out there to survey the lands under my care. A spiritual power trip, really. <laughs>
want to know my top three cured meats of all time? Gravilohi, which is cured salmon, and um, kuivaliha, or any jerky, and jamon iberico. Oh. Uh, you know, iberico is really nice, uh, but I don't eat it very often, so maybe it's not good to have it on my top list. I'll change iberico to bacon. <laughs> bacon always works. These lakes and streams have salmon, uh, pike, perch, uh, rainbow trout, and how do you say this fish, um, uh, kuha? Uh, it's like the mix of the pike and perch. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, thunder. Finland is really top of the notch for fishing. I've got a few pikes in the lake you're walking past right now. Um, they were like 14 kilos or 30 pounds. It could have been the same one, since I always release the pike we catch. I don't know about you, but I think they are not very good to eat. My kids prefer salmon, so we usually fish for that when looking for Tuesday dinner. For the fish and chips person, uh, there is also cod out in the archipelago. Or other whitefish like halibut and flounder. You should come by the house. Uh, I'll cook fish and chips. I, I think you will like my batter. I use a secret ingredient in it. Because, you know, you have to respect the butter for good fish and chips. Here we are, and just in time for a break. We are building a new sauna out here. Not a lot of things beat having a nice sauna bath close to a lake. Have you ever had the opportunity to try a sauna? If not, there is no better place than here. I can't begin to tell you how much I love a sauna. Not just because it's relaxing, but I have so many memories from my childhood. I remember my brothers and I having snowball fights during our sauna breaks. The last time we had a snowball fight, I remember I slid on an icy patch and fractured my tailbone. I think I was uh, eight years old. There are just so many good things about the sauna. 
uh, the nakedness, uh, the connection to nature, and how it allows you to center yourself, and how sacred that is. I don't know who said it, uh, but it truly is a church of nature. I actually proposed to my partner after a sauna. She said no, uh, but somehow we ended up together anyway. <laughs> Guess the nakedness helped. If you feel like trying it out, go ahead. I've marked the location on your hunter mate. It seems the construction guys aren't finished with installing the heater. The rocks there need to be placed on the heater. Do you mind doing it? These rocks are what is usually used in saunas. It's called diabase or dolerite. It's suitable because it's odorless, it's cut to the correct size, and doesn't crack because of heat. A form of diabase was used to build stone hens. Isn't that neat how different cultures find use for the same material? We use it to get hot, they use it as a monolithic calendar. <laughs> there is also a bird's whisk on the wall there if you want. It smells wonderful. Go ahead, place the rocks on the heater and the sauna will be ready. How did you like it? Maybe I will join next time. I will bring sausage and something to drink.
These two lakes are kept from one another by a little stretch of land. They only meet when it rains. It's a romantic tragedy of nature. I've read a few times that Finland is at the top of lists that rank happiness. And I think I'm at the top of the list of Finns when I'm in places like this. You know, it's not only the beauty. It's the way nature shapes this landscape without any real end goal in mind. It's incidental beauty. Or to think about it in another way. Is it perceived as beautiful by anything other than humans? What factors have made us appreciate this? Does a monkey climb a tree only to pick the fruit? Or does he also take a second to appreciate the view? The way nature fits it all together is funny to me. Have you heard the quote from Edison? I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. <laughs> Describing his method for creating something is perhaps close to how evolution works. Nature needed countless mutations to create a thing that contemplates how many times it needs to create another thing. I, I wonder if you could call Edison's various attempts as him using his imagination and creativity. Uh, could you then call nature's evolution and mutation as a manifestation of its creativity? But is evolution's creativity like a child painting or like an inventor finding ways that don't work? <laughs> I think I need a long walk to think about this some more. I've seen a lot of brown bears to the north of here. There are rumors of a great, big, unique-looking bear in the region. I have never seen it myself, and I'm not sure if it's true or not. Maybe you could go and check it out. You know, in old Finnish mythology, the bear is a very sacred animal. We say karhu in Finland. When a bear was harvested, a great feast was held in its honor. And part of the celebrations was about convincing the bear spirit it had died by accident and not been killed. This was done so that the bear spirit would not try to seek revenge. Afterward, the community would help the bear spirit return to the forest so they would continue to be game in the future. For other communities, the bear was a son of a god and was symbolically married to a maiden to make a bear god happy. Waking up on a Wednesday and hearing the good news. You're being married to a grizzly today. <laughs> have you written your vows? We might not have a lot in common with ancient people, but hunting and celebrating the harvest is something we've been doing for many millennia. That emotion and activity ties us directly to the hunters that came before us. You know, it takes a while to sink in. You are doing and feeling the same exact thing hunters 5,000 years ago might have felt. The last ice age created a lot of amusing landmarks on the Finnish landscape. I've marked their location on your hunter mate so you can check them out. Apart from natural landmarks, there are a few man-made ones here as well that I think would be worth visiting. I recommend you to check them out if you happen to be close to one of them.
just northeast of here, up the cliff is a lookout tower. This trail does not get any closer, so if you want to use it, now is a good time. Come back here when you want to continue the trail. We are pretty close to halfway through the blue trail now. Have you been enjoying yourself so far? You know, there are plenty more trails to walk on. For example, the yellow trail takes you through the hills. My personal favorite, the one me and Pirio take when we want a long walk with Holly, is the red trail. It's a bit of a trek, but it goes down through the archipelago. Pirio is an oceanologist, so we can mix business with pleasure and bring our binoculars for some bird watching. We have many different species of birds that visit us. Um, I don't remember the names of the birds in English. Uh, we have the uh, Metsahanhi and the Tukkasotka. And oh, oh yes, yes, <laughs> this one I know. We have the Golden Eye, which I remember because uh, Pierce Brosnan. Uh, he's good James Bond. And maybe you know, birds can't keep secrets, so if you listen, you can usually hear them long before you see them. When I want to get really close to them, I usually use a pulse blind. We have them available in the shop if you want to use one. Talking about birds reminds me of a song me and Pirio made together a few days ago. We recorded the call of some birds and made this. It's very short, but I think it turned out funny. Let me put it on. Good, right? A Pirio is very talented. You know, west of here is a lookout tower, and northwest of that there is an outpost. It's a bit of a walk, but you can visit them now if you want, or we can just continue on the blue trail. You know, this country has a history of high accuracy riflemen. And I believe it is important that a hunter is a few things. Firstly, somebody that respects and understands the tick and talk of nature and our place in it. Secondly, somebody that gives as much as he takes in life. And thirdly, a good shot. You know, nature doesn't really mind suffering, but we don't need to add to it.
I've set up a few targets for you to test your aim. Go to the rock circle to start. Let's start with an easy 150 meters. You can use whatever weapon and scope you want. Go to the next rock circle. Not a lot to say about this distance. 200 meters or 219 yards. You probably take most of your game at this distance. If you're not zeroing your scope, remember to compensate for the drop by shooting slightly above the target. Hyvä! Here we go, 250 meters. Somewhere around here is where wheat is separated from the chaff. Hienosti! Nice that you are not chaff. Three hundred meters or three hundred and twenty eight yards. Imagine the old days trying to hit this distance with an iron sight. Mahtava. I'm glad you have good aim. You know, I've been thinking of investing in a shooting range. It would be a good activity for our visitors and a source of revenue for the reserve. And down the line, a win for the animals, right? This has given me new energy to look into it. Thank you. Let's head back to the trail. I have a riddle for you. In the misty Finnish mountains, there is a village of magical squirrels. When they are born, they are randomly given a red or blue hat from their squirrel parents. A squirrel never knows the color of its own hat, and there are no reflective surfaces in the squirrel village. From a young age, they are taught a secret sorting rule that allows them to correctly sort themselves according to the color of their hat. Once a year, the squirrels have a ceremony. They all gather in the village center in a way that they can all see each other. They take a good look at each other and individually perform the sorting rule. Then they close their eyes and walk to the left or right end of the center. After a short while, they walk back, mix, and open their eyes again. 
How do they manage to sort themselves without making any mistakes? What is the rule? I'll give you a second to think about it. Any ideas? Here are a few clues. The answer is rational and logical. These are squirrels we're talking about. The number of squirrels doesn't matter, but to keep it practical, let's say it's any number between 5 and 10. It's something about counting, odds and evens. Try to put yourself in the shoes of one of these squirrels. Why would you arrive at a different number than another squirrel? Are you getting close to the answer? Here's a big clue. If everybody counted the same color, let's say blue, what number would squirrels that have a blue hat get opposed to the red squirrel? We are getting close to the end of the tour. This section is the easiest. What were your favorite parts of the trek? People usually like the lake views. From the ground, you might not see that there are a lot of lakes in Finland. But from above, the countryside shimmers. You know, Finland is known as the land of a thousand lakes. But more correct would be the land of about 190,000 lakes. A paradise for the hunter, the fisher, the poet and the mosquito. To make it easier to move around, we have boats stationed at the bigger lakes. Feel free to use them when you need to cross from one shore to another. I thought it would be nice to rest your legs and uh, take the last part of the trek in a boat. That's the end of the blue trail and our trek. I hope you enjoyed the walk and our chat. It was fun getting to know each other, and I hope you will always have a positive view on Revontuli Coast. Do you mind if I play a little tune? I wrote for the occasion.